In today's video, we're going to talk more in depth about the model. In our model view controller architecture, the model exists over here and is the code that interacts directly with our database and maintains the state of that database in, in a Rails application. And in Rails, our model, which is called active record, if you see the term active record, that's talking about our model, is our object relational mapping mechanism. A model corresponds directly to a table that's in our database. And the elements or fields in the table of our database correspond to attributes inside of our class that this model is. So if we have, in this case, four tables, we're going to have four models in our particular application. Now, Rails maintains for you the status of that, and you get that for free. It's part of the framework. You don't have to worry about whether you're updating or writing or reading or any of those things. You simply instantiate those models and then request data from them, and you will get the current data coming out of your database. Now, there are advanced mechanisms to control that, but we won't be covering them in this series of videos. I'm going to exit out of my presentation here and jump over to some Ruby code. And this is that application in an earlier video I showed you. It's the help request tracking system that I developed. And this is the class of tech. It's an active record. And you can see this class declaration up here of active record. So we know it's a model that the table it corresponds to is the tech table in the database. And there's some very specific rules or conventions. If you remember, we talked about conventions over configuration philosophy of, of Rails. And there's some rules with how this is named. But other than that name, this is a pretty typical way that this is a model is declared here. This is, again, Ruby code, how this is structured. And we'll go into more in depth of what this actually means. You have some code here that sets up some one-to-many relationships. And it means pretty much what it says here. So this class of tech has many work requests. It's pretty close to English in that fashion. So there's one tech, and that tech has many work requests. That also has some other things that go along with that particular tech. They're assigned to multiple things. There's a method that goes along with this class, this model, that is used for when we log in. And again, I'll go more in depth into what this code actually does later on, but I just want to give you a little exposure to this code. And finally, we have another method that involves the login. This is a pretty typical model with regards to the relationship stuff. There's other simpler models that might just have relationships. And there's models in cases where you're not going to have any code other than your class declaration exposing that table. Well, let's go back into this tech. And I'm going to jump over to my database application. And you're going to see here, I have some tables in my database. And my one table is called text. Now you'll notice a difference in how this is named. And that's one of the first conventions you got to think about is how this is going to be named. And you notice this is singular, tech, whereas the table name is text. And it's spelled a little bit differently, not necessarily how you would expect it. And sometimes you have to play around with that to figure out how to get that to work properly. When we generate models, we'll look at that a little bit more. That's a later video. If we look inside tech here, you'll see a number of, of elements corresponding to fields in there. And most of these are pretty typical table views. Here's users with a lot more data and stuff corresponding to to our model here. Now you'll notice I'm actually not spelling out the elements here. I'm just saying the relationships, if there are any. Rails actually picks up from the database itself the structure of the tables. So if I add a field to this table, I don't have to change anything in my model. Rails will automatically pick up from my database table that there was a change and that will be accessible then from my code. I don't have to restart anything. I can simply add it in there. If there's views that rely on that, I might have to add that particular column in to show up. But otherwise, I don't have to add it in any kind of declaration or anything. And that's a change in the past. And some of the other, such as the Java-based object relational mapping mechanisms, you actually have to declare 
Java code that shows up the attributes of what's in the table, so they have to match. Well, that's the duplication of effort. And this is where some of the dry philosophy comes into Rails, is that your, your database holds your schema. You don't put the schema of your database anywhere except in your database. The only thing you're establishing is the relationships inside your model declarations. Now, just if you're curious, I'm using the TextMate editor here on Mac OS X, and it's only available on Mac OS X, I'm sorry, but you'll have to switch to Mac OS X if you want it. It's a great little text editor, and it uh, does well with Rails. There's editors on Windows, and when we talk in future videos about how to install on Windows, I'll talk about those editors. And this program here for working with MySQL database is called Navicat and it's a decent little program and there's other free programs. This one is not free and neither is TextMate though. So that's the end of our presentation on this video. I hope that you look at the future videos and we'll cover view and controller and other videos more in depth also as we have done here. Thank you.